everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Watchening, the show where you watch me watch something and we watch it together. And uh, old VHSs is, is what it's all about. So, as you can see, the the whole the whole vibe of this is old school. And last time we watched a VHS of the very first Metalhead Video magazine from I believe 1990. And uh, this time we're going to be moving a little bit further into the 90s. So um, around the mid 90s, I got really into uh, what a lot of people would refer to as skate punk, which really at the time, if I was going to explain it or, or give it characteristics, it was essentially punk music, but faster and more technical and more melodic, uh, a little bit poppy. But it, the, the, it was a, it was the kind of punk that a, a metalhead like me was comfortable getting into. And a lot of the bands that I loved were on a label called Fat Records, Fat Rec Chords, uh, that was started by Fat Mike from No Effects. And so um, in 1997, is that when this one is from? We're going to be watching uh, this right here, Peep Show, the Fat Records compilation video Peep Show. And when this came out in 97, I was really into pretty much every band on Fat Records. It got to the point that if it had the Fat logo on it, I was going to buy it. And so when this came out, this was a really big deal for me. And because of that, over the years, this has now become a very nostalgic video for me. Because it just because I was a teenager, it was the later years of high school. Well, actually, in 97, I had just graduated high school. Yeah, and I was in a band and we were doing music that was similar to some of these skate punk bands. But I was really into this and I've watched this several times over the years and it's always an absolute blast. So I'm gonna sh share it with you guys in case you haven't seen it. And so you'll get to, I don't know, jam along with me, I guess, as they, I, that's that's lame, whatever, we're, we, doesn't matter. So th this is a lot of music videos, there's stuff in between them, but I'm going to, try my best while a song is playing. I'm not gonna pause it or talk. Cause I talk, I pause things, I talk, I talk over stuff. But since this is so much about full songs um, in this case, I'm just, I'm gonna let the songs play out. In between we'll pause and we'll have a little talk and whatnot. But I'm just glad that you're all here um, along for the ride watching Peep Show. If you, look, if you wanna look real quickly, can you even see the list of bands that are on it, a lot of fucking killer bands. And, uh, yeah, there you go, Peep Show. Um, this one, this has been encrypted with Macrovision. Does anybody remember what Macrovision was? It was supposed to keep you from copying the VHS. And if I remember right, it didn't really work that well. But anyway, so let's do this, Peep Show. Everybody ready? Everybody got, everybody got their drinks? I do, all right. Here we go, everybody. Peep show. Anybody, anybody know that they, there's a, a long period of just nothing at the beginning of the VHSs because that's a part of the tape that often gets fucked up. And then the FBI warning. Watch yourselves.
So, any, anybody ever actually gone to like a nudie booth kind of thing? I've, I've never, when there's like an actual person on the other end of the wall, I've never been to anything like that. Am I missing out? You tell me. I don't know. But, you know, there's not, there's no, there's no lady. Well, there's ladies, but you're not, the excite, never mind. So the thing I really like about this VHS too is that, you know, there's the music video, but then there's some sort of little thing involving the band. And this one's probably my favorite, just because this is the kind of thing as a band that I would want to do, where it's like, hey, go on a pub crawl with us and watch us get increasingly drunk as it goes on. <laughs> so uh, let's go along with Goober Patrol. Lovely job. Another traditional old English band. And they're open. And they're open. That's traditional old English loony. <laughs> Another traditional old English pub. It is traditional old English fiver. Two pints. Yes. No, another traditional old English pub. That's a bloody crime. Nice one. Traditional old English shop license. Bottoms up! <laughs> Chin -chin. Another bloody spout! <laughs> there he is, you know! And another traditional old English pub! Very good! <laughs> Ow! Get banned! Don't come back! No! Another old traditional English pub! A pub! Oh my god! It's a bloody pub! Alright, there you go, let's... 
Right, I'll right. see your money then this time. Oi, 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 come on, oi. Here's it. Gotta have some no effects on a, uh, a fat records, fat records. I always say fat records, and I've been corrected before, and I'm all like, shut up. Let's go to the elevator, just take an elevator ride. There we go. No, in the elevator. How far down are you on? This is gonna work. What do I press? Don't press anything, actually. Oh. Uh, just hanging out in the elevator. Come on in the elevator. Get your dick out of my ass. Come in the elevator. Come I wanna be an alcoholic. Wanna be killed drug dependent. Wanna be sunny in most of the time. I wanna be a one I dance. I wanna back that in with my pants. I wanna be an alcoholic man. Hi. You guys are having a good time. This is a little video. We're a punk rock band. That's I've seen this so many times and think probably one of my favorite things is just LFA saying we're in a punk rock band. <laughs> oh man, this I'm telling you the, the nostalgia just comes flooding back with this because this is just so much fun. And uh yeah, I, I mean and I also like the fact that that no effects who arguably at the time were the biggest band out of any band that was on their label and they just put on like a 20 second song <laughs> so if anybody was like i'm getting this for no effects and it's it's barely anything uh but they've, they've always been a band that went really against the grain with pretty much everything that they did and uh and i love the fact that it's, it's still well they just tech i think i guess they technically retired at least retired from touring i don't really I don't know if there was a actual explanation to what the ending of their band means. I'm assuming it means they're not going to be a touring band anymore, but I think they probably still have one more album in them. But I just love that it's just the same dudes. Ever since El Jefe joined the band in, I think, early 90s, it's just, it's been the same four dudes. And they just always seem like they have such a fucking great time. And I love No Effects. They're great. All right, no, no, enough, of my, enough of my talking. Let's, let's move on. So I've always been curious about that too. Anyone from Lagwagon who is watching, did is that just in that part of the country? Is that how you thank people when they give you something for free? Is you pull your butt out, or was it was it already a, an agreed upon thing? Like, hey, would you like a CD? You're gonna have to take your ass out. Either way, it's pretty funny. <laughs>
Oh yeah, also rest in peace to Derek, the drummer on this particular recording. He was their drummer for their first three albums and he was fantastic. One, one of my favorite drummers, but uh, he passed away, I think in the early 2000s, unfortunately. So rest in peace. I didn't mean to stop the song. God, I said I wasn't gonna stop the song. That was important. All right, ready? Let's go. So, so something that they do in that song, and a lag wagon did uh, does a lot, and other bands from that time that I don't hear a lot anymore that I used to really love was these these kind of punk bands would do that stop where they're almost like skipping the first beat of a part. So it'd be like I used to love that, and I remember the band I was in at the time. I kept trying to write songs where I could incorporate just a bunch of those in a song. <laughs> but uh, you don't hear that a lot anymore. I guess because there's not really too many bands that are like this these days. Unfortunately, there should be. Anyway, Lagwagon's fucking great. Let's move on. All right, so ju just because I I, I, I I was gonna do like a fun fact, I'm gonna wait to do the fun fact, sorry.
name's Matt. Uh, I'm a part of Michael Basis in Florida. So the the, jo the joke there is that Matt was the bass player of Face to Face, and I I think he quit Face to Face and then joined No Use for a Name. And the the thing that kind of gets covered up is he's calling another band like I'm 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 calling about the bassist wanted ad because <laughs> he just shows up and he murders every band that he's in. Anyway. Um, I don't remember where I was going with that, uh, just because w we ran into another uh, another big loss. I, I was like, oh man, I didn't realize watching this again, there would be, you know, so many, well, I guess at this point it's two people that have passed away. Um, but I'm not going to, yeah, let's move on and have fun. But I just it just sucks that people are, uh, that, whatever the substance abuse other things tragedies of any kind whatever it is it sucks that people that are very talented uh leave this world early because uh, nice for name was a great band let's continue It again, it, it's I'm getting getting a little little tipsy here, um, and, and and I don't know if it's needless to say or not, but in 1997, I 100% had a crush on the girl that is in this video. <laughs> truth, truth time. There was something that I was going to say in there, and I decided I wasn't going to stop the song again. I'm trying to do better, everyone. Um, rest in peace, Tony Sly. Uh, so, God, that song is so good. That's 
there's a, a, a you know a good couple dozen songs that I would say are uh, songs that immediately bring me back to a period of my life, and uh, that one, one hundred percent does. Uh, great one. I wonder. I wonder what's next. What could be next? Well, everybody pees in the shower. Screw thirty two, everybody. So, when this came out in nineteen ninety seven, my favorite band on Fat Records was Screw thirty two. Um, my friends had actually kind of gotten me into them because they saw them play like some small show in Austin when they only had their first album out, which wasn't on Fat Records. And I heard that and I fucking loved it so much. Still love it to this day. And then they put out their second album on Fat Records and it didn't do well at all. They're not a band that anybody fucking talks about, but you know me, I, that means I, it's a band that I'm gonna talk about because I think they were unique and f cool and everything, I don't know, I love Screw 32. So let's get on to Screw 32 and I'm gonna pour another drink. All right, everybody, all right. You know, it's just the water's running, it's hot, you forgot to do it before you got in there. It just happens, you know? It's the way of life, girls and guys, you know? Everybody needs a shower. Does that answer your question? So what does Screw 32 mean to you? When I started this band, I was having a really bad year and I was 23, so, so I'm kind of, I was kind of bummed at that. So backwards, it was kind of 23 works, because I just wanted to kind of pull it all together. Excuse me, no. <laughs> Oxford American Dictionary. Look up the word screw. There's 43 meanings. The 32nd meaning is an irreparable blunder or mistake with serious consequences. That's what screw 32 means. What does screw 32 mean to me? It doesn't mean shit. You're like videotaping us right now, aren't you? Yeah, that's okay. So, um, so I guess if, uh, if we were gonna videotape it down there, I guess that, uh, I'd start singing right about there, and we go one, two, and uh, and we get down there, beautiful. Just make love to the camera. I'm going to. Yeah, I love that song. That band was great. I, I saw them on that tour, and it, it was one of those things where, like, the, these bands were relatively popular, I guess, but when they would come through Austin, Texas around this time, 
there was a club that was called Emo's. It's still there, only it's in a different location and it's a big venue now. But at that point, Emo's had two different rooms. The big room where a slightly bigger club acts would play and then the little room where bands like my band would play. And the these bands would usually come through and play the small room. Like Screw 32 played the small room. I think No Use for Name, though, when I saw them, No Use for Name and Lagwagon, they were big room bands. But a lot of these other ones, they were coming and playing that little room, sometimes not even halfway packing it out. But um, but yeah, Screw 32 broke up soon after that. Apparently they didn't get along with each other. And I remember I had I came in contact with the vocalist shit like probably about eight years ago. And he was saying he was going to try to reboot the band. Nobody else really wanted to do it, and he wanted to do it. But then nothing really came of that that I know of, and so I don't know. But um, I love Screw 32. That's a, one of those, you know, you know me, lesser known bands or bands that don't get enough respect, and I'm all just like, yes, these are these are mine. But I'm gonna, you know, I I I should do a Screw 32 bands you should know. Maybe eventually, I will. High Standard, uh, great Japanese punk band. Uh, one, I don't remember which one of them also recently passed away. Rest in peace, guy whose name I don't remember right now. But fun fact to know about High Standard though, High Standard, I don't think they ever toured over in the States. Maybe they did once, I don't know. But all I know is that later on, this band got, got so big from what I read, it got to the point that they only played one show every year that was, I guess, was like a New Year's Eve show, and they would play it at a fucking stadium because that's how big of a deal they were over in Japan. I might have my facts a little wrong, but I, I like that story, so don't tell me I'm wrong. High, High Standard were a great band. I really loved the album that this song is off of. So uh, let's do it. Lambert Street. Hey, what do you guys think hey, of San Francisco? Yeah. Yeah. San Francisco. California dreamy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, looks nice. <laughs> Everybody here? I love you guys. <laughs> Thank you, San Francisco. Thank you. We love you. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about San Francisco? Ah, uh, uh, peeping show, strip show. <laughs> I hear you're a famous porn star in Japan. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes. No, actually, no, I'm not. <laughs> you're not? <laughs> Two days. Two days. Two days. Yeah. He's a famous uh, dick star. <laughs> California, Bohemian. Everybody take my chair. <laughs>
Was it ever continued? <laughs> if it was, I didn't see it. Okay, sorry, pausing it. Um, Bracket, another band that I loved back in the day. Still still together, still kicking it today. I think the same four dudes also. Um, I saw Bracket the first time op- opening up for Tilt, I believe is when I saw them, at Liberty Lunch. And all I remember was that after Bracket finished playing, my friend and I went to the merch booth to get some merch, and I think it was the bass player or this guitar player right here. I don't, it's been a long time. This was 1996, I think, and it could have been 97. Um, but I just remember we went over there, and this dude was friendly as fuck and just kept. We just had a conversation that just kept going to the point where we're just chatting with this dude from Bracket and all of a sudden half of the Tilt show had already happened. <laughs> and we're just like, oh, a Tilt's on. Um, but I just remember like that was one of the things that that I was like, man, these bands are just like th- this the this grouping of, of, of dudes from my contact with a lot of these bands, which has been minimal, but they're always just, they're always such cool dudes. There's not, there's no egos involved in a lot of these bands, and I, um, I love that. I mean, I guess I've, I've run into a lot of bands these days that they don't have a whole lot of egos, and those are the ones that um, will kindly talk to somebody like me. But you know, back back in 1997, there was no old head. There was just random dude in some band that you didn't know that wasn't playing anyway. Um, and funny enough, it, I looked like this, only with no beard. So the hair was here. The beard was gone. Although by the time this came out, I may have already cut my hair. That was a bad decision. And then 10 years later, I grew it out again. But anyway, uh, I think everybody went through that period. The cut your hair period. Don't do it. Don't do it. If you're not losing your hair, grow that shit out. Bracket. Yeah, we gotta bring on the bacon. Yeah, bring on the bacon, do a little songwriting. 
bring home the bagels. We got like <laughs> we're recording it next week. We got to write a whole album for it tonight, right? Yeah. Right now. Okay, you guys gotta go. And that album would become Novelty Forever, which is fucking great. They were like the, they were almost like the, I remember somebody I knew like, referred to them as like the punk rock beach boys because <laughs> the, the, the harmonies and, and the, the poppy songwriting melodies and everything. Um, great, great guys, great songs. Still, still around today. Check them out. What bands are still around out of all these lag wagons still kicking it? Bracket. Are those the only two <laughs> so far out of all the bands that we've that we've heard from? I don't know if Goober Patrol is still around or not. Somebody might out there might know, um, but I don't know for sure. But I know for sure Lagwagon and Bracket are both doing shit. And oh man, that's that's interesting. I mean, would, I guess in some cases the the main person in the band passed passed away. Let's continue. <laughs> Get his own brothers out. <laughs> yeah. We'll see, we'll see you next time. Filmed by the Brothers Castro. <laughs> we're on tour with NoFX and we were playing in Stockholm, Sweden. And Chuck was backstage. Let's pause it on the naked dude. Um, I, I believe Good Riddance is still together. I think they did an album recently, although I don't remember it. That's I should that's I should do something about that. And he was taking a shower and he was exposing himself to anybody who wanted to see him, and he came behind behind the stage and he got Mike to come back while while he was playing his set, and he had a wireless uh, plugged into his bass, and he came back and saw Chuck running around in a towel, and then Chuck decided to, to proceed in partaking in the nude Olympics, which pretty much just consisted of him running around naked, doing a high jump, and doing a long, long jump in the sand, and pretty much typical stuff that, that Chuck does on a daily basis, so it wasn't really anything to my surprise, but I guess to most people it's kind of shocking. So that so that that I'm all I'm all like that's the kind of thing that these days I think people would consider it some sort of uh, him a sexual predator because <laughs> he's people don't streaking's not a thing anymore. So remember, kids, this was 1997 when it was still looked at as funny for a person to run around naked. Now it's it's considered traumatizing. Honestly, depending on who you're talking to, that's why I've never run around naked because I don't want to traumatize anybody. So to each their own. So you're welcome. I've never run around naked before, and well, in public. Thank you. 
So Good Riddance, uh, also a great band. And that album, their first two albums, I really enjoy. Third one's good too, but the first two, especially that one, um, there, there are certain bands that were doing this sort of style of punk. Because that, the whole, the bouncy beat to that, that wasn't very punk. But that's kind of the shit that like I wanted to do as a musician, songwriter, singer, blah, blah, blah at that point. And that's why this thing is really important to me because it was um, around this time in Austin, Texas, nobody was making heavy music like like metal, um, which is really what I wanted to do. Uh, but everyone I knew was into punk. And so I found my way into these bands and in this sort of style like this and what Screw 32 were doing. It, it was a little bit more, I guess it's an, um, more on the hardcore, like post-hardcore side of things, I guess. I don't know. But that stuff is what really connected with me back in the day. And so I still feel that now when I'm listening. Am I rambling too much? Is anybody having a good time? Anybody out there? I hope you are. Let's keep going. This isn't a super long video. I don't even know how, how, many, how many bands do we have left. Let's take a look. We've got five bands. Five bands left. All right, let's keep going. He has to do it again. 43rd time. You guys gonna come back over here and tour anytime soon? We're gonna be back in back stateside a couple of times this year, I hope. Alright. Yes, and we're gonna rock, I can tell you. <laughs> we're gonna rock. <laughs> yes. What are you gonna do? What are we gonna do now? We're gonna rock. We're, we're gonna rock. Any last comments from anyone else in the band? I'll be honest enough, I'd like to thank you very much. <laughs> okay. See, that wasn't so bad. Snuff. It's still going today. Great fucking band, but they... I guess kind of like... Because No Use Frame, I think, kind of started in the late 80s as well. But Snuff were doing stuff in the, early, in the late 80s, early 90s. And they've always been a band that kind of just... They're punk, but they kind of just did whatever the fuck they wanted to do. And uh, they're great. So let's get some snuff. Let's do some snuff, everybody. Do you do, do you do snuff? Or is it snuff? Is it snuff like dye? Snuff like the stuff you chew? It's bad for you? I don't know. All right. Hey, tell, tell everyone to say goodbye. I'm not 
song from snuff there and, and singing drummer uh, i saw snuff open for no effects who's who who all have i seen on this on this tape i never saw goober patrol i saw no effects i saw lag wagon i saw you no use for a name I saw screw 32 did not see high standard i saw bracket i don't think i saw good riddance i saw snuff out of the next couple bands i've only seen two of them four more to go this next one is to to me the low point in the tape because it it's weird because um fat records uh, seemed like they always had like one band that I was like eh and then as the years went on that kind of band grew to like mostly what they have on the label which is stuff that just seemed too on the nose punk like punk almost like it's cosplay and i don't know if these dudes were like that i just their music didn't speak to me swinging utters is the band um but the they started catering too much to like ska and and punk bands that didn't do anything interesting they literally just towed the line of here's what's punk let's do that um, they've got, they've had bands here and there that have, that have not been, been like that. So I still sort of pay attention to, to fat records, but on this one, this was always the song that I would go pee or go get a drink during, but who knows, maybe you'll like it. All right, so you guys play punk rock, right? How long have you been around? So what do you play? Okay, what do you play? And you? You? Are you guys too cool to answer my question? but I'm right, right? There's nothing special about this. Nothing exciting. It feels, on, on a modern scale, you could just put AI, please write me a punk song, and it would sound like this. Just a second to crash up to bed damage That's more than enough time I need to see to the Rene queries You're telling me Shape up for shape out But I never shake myself
Yeah. They've heard all the rap before. Okay, well, hey, okay, I have a second verse. Don't do that. You're, you're okay. messing me up. Yeah. Right. Uh, wait, wait, what's the, the, uh, oh, no, you've heard them all before about the milk and stuff. No, stop. It's not on anything. Come on. Say it. Just do it. Yeah, we can raw, edit it or not. Tilt uh, were a good band. I don't think they're a band anymore. And uh, Cinder Block vocalist, really great vocalist. I saw them twice, the aforementioned time where I was talking to somebody from Bracket, and then I saw them again. And I believe the bass, at that point, the bass player of Screw 32 had joined Tilt, I think. I have my facts straight in my head. Great band, though. Cut. Okay. Like MTV, come on. Yeah. The beat got fat and the beat got louder, but the beat got nothing on my mama's clam chowder. She got a little dog, it's a little pink poodle. Well, she don't feed a kibble, just one apple strudel. It's time for a drink, not gin and juice. Don't you laugh at me, man, because I got a short fuse. I'm talking about a beverage, it's smooth and silk. It's a cold 40 ounce of low fat milk. Got milk. Wicked does a body good. Got milk. Wicked does a body good. Well, my mama, my papa, my sister, and my brother, well, they don't like. Fig Newtons, but they like the peanut butter. My aunt's taste are more sophisticated because she piles a whipped cream high on a pie made out of sweet potato. And this is not the first time, but I'm hoping it's the last. Open a fridge dare and I'm scared because there's nothing to fill my glass, but you better not laugh because I'll drink half and half. Got milk? That's it. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> oh, so that. from the Vandals, correct? Vandals are not on this because they weren't on Fat Records. It's 
some unsuspecting janitors. All right, strung out. Um, uh, another great band uh, who are still around today. I think Strung Out is, out of all of these bands, the band that connects with the metal folk uh, the most. And it's because they got a lot of they got riffs. But, uh, yeah. I think that this is just a live performance from, from Strung Out. But, hey, here you go. Enjoy. First off, I forgot that I did see you strung out. I was trying to remember who they opened for. They opened for somebody that I saw, but I don't remember. I didn't see them. But um, I do, uh, this has always been funny to me, even in 1997. Because, like, the band is strung out, and you're like, oh, cool, we get a live performance from strung out. And then they just intersperse this random, like, snowboarding. And it just makes me feel like whoever put this video together was like, look, it's not extreme enough. We need some sort of extreme sport in there. We already got some snowboarding footage from the No Use for a Name video. Because <laughs> it's unnecessary. Who the fuck? They're not playing at a ski resort. And so, like, why? Why even do that? Just take, just show the fucking band. I don't know. They, they should have consulted me. I, I, in fact, a lot of people in a lot of different areas in the history of everything should have consulted me. That brings us to the last artist um, who I did see um, a little bit after this. Uh, Me First in the Gimme Gimmies. If you don't know them, it's like a punk rock cover band. And they're a lot of fun. So uh, we got this one more to go. So hopefully you all enjoy it. Sing along if you know the words.
I'm gonna have a son He will be like she and me As free as a dove Come and see me love The sun is gonna shine above Even though we ain't got money I'm so in love with you honey Ori nice. Originally a John Denver song, I believe. Pisces Virgo rising is a very good sign. Strong and kind. And a little boy is mine. Now I see a family where there once was none. And now it's just begun. Yeah, we're gonna fly to the sun. Love her and she'll bring you luck If you find she helps your mind Better take her home Don't you live alone Try to earn what lovers own Here you go! Even though we ain't got money I'm so in love with you, honey Everything will bring a change So that was Peep Show. Here, here are credits. Oh, there's a, it's audio from the the karaoke show. Guru Patrol with Easy Life, Flag Wagon with Razor Bird. No use for a name with Soulmate. What else we got? Screw 32, Misunderstood. High Standard Maximum Overdrive. I don't need to read all these. Anyway, this has been uh, Peep Show. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I, I enjoy the fuck out of this. And it's, you know, you're going to get all the different flavors of Old Head when we do these uh, watchings. But I have a feeling next time we're going to get back to the metal. So um, if for those of you who didn't quite love the punk vibes on this one okay um we're, we're gonna get back to the metal eventually or the hard rock or something but uh yeah thanks to all the bands everyone who's set foot in the uh, uh, footage of the best fit my alright so there we go Anyway, <laughs> a 
little Madonna at the end there for everybody. Fat Records, all right, it's reserved copyright 1997. Man, that feels like such a long time ago. All right, so that's the end of this episode of The Watching. Thank you very much for joining me and for indulging me. And in, the fact that you are, if you're still here and you watched me watching something and, and enjoyed it, um, that's weird, but also uh, comforting because I know that there's other weirdos like me in the world. And uh, I love you guys. So thank you very much for watching The Watching. And I'll be back again with some other video. I don't know what's next. But a wa another watching will be coming in the horizon, on the horizon, in the near future. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good night or day. I'll see you all again very soon.